else you got? Okay, so this one's far less tragic than Tammy and far less tragic than Donnie. Um, this one is this one still bugs me. I don't know what happened to this guy, why he stopped recording, or what he's really been up to since. Tevin Campbell. We the, know. I mean, I haven't really followed him. I haven't really haven't followed him this, this last decade. But all I know is that Prince, Quincy Jones, Babyface, all these guys co-signed for this dude. All of at, them. At, at, think, think about that. Prince, Quincy Jones, and Babyface. Narrow to I, Michael Walden, the same guy that produced Whitney Houston did. That the ultimate winning combination. And Tevin, Tevin had the voice and he had the talent to back it up too. I mean, he was a, a child, a child prodigy. I remember watching Graffiti Bridge and he was on there. Uh, that was back in what, 88, 89. And then, and then tomorrow with, with Quincy Jones, um, Man, that's a song right there, man. I have okay. I have a cousin, cousin Monica. She's about a year younger than me. Whenever that song plays, to this day, she cries. It's a great song. It, it really is. Song. And you know how that song started, right? No, but it, the song began as a Brothers Johnson song. It began as an instrumental. It didn't have words. It's funny you brought up Brothers Johnson because they're. Um, I think Quincy Jones did a version of. Um, You've been good to me. Um, that was later. Yeah, it was later. We had you know Ray Charles and Chaka Khan on it. That's um, it. Yeah. That song started as a Brother Johnson thing too. Yeah. And yeah. Stomp did and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Tevin Campbell. He yeah. Tomorrow was was a really really good song, and it's another one of those songs where you just get lost in thought listening to it. Props um, to Saida Garrett too for the lyrics. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's just there's just so much innocence and peace in his voice. You know, it, it's hard not to get caught up in that. Um, Agreed. And yeah, I, I just don't, I just don't get it with him. I don't understand what happened. He, his first two albums did really well. Um, you know, he did Just Ask You To. That was on the Boys in the Hood soundtrack. Yeah, the Round Around. I think that was produced by Prince. Obviously, you can yeah, tell. Yeah, definitely Prince. The, yeah. Back, the, back, the, back, the background vocals. Um, uh, tell Me What You Want Me To Do. Another powerful ballad that he did on his first album. Um, that note at the end of the book. Right. What is right. it like? And, and then he even has a, a song on, on that first album. It's like a more up-tempo song kind of called Goodbye. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Kyle West. Yeah, I've always, another song that I've always liked. And then... AC and JoJo uh, singing backup. Oh, do they? Yeah. I never do that. I never do yeah, that. Yeah, that's them. And then he did a, a, a... It's kind of an uninspired version of Strawberry Letter. It was okay. Um, it's okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's another one of those you just can't cover. Right, you know. Um, it belongs to, it belongs to Shuggy. You can't cover it. Mm-hmm. And then the second album was really when Babyface started to really take over you know, for production. Um, you know, Can We Talk? My favorite Tim, that's my favorite Tevin song. I love that song to death. All day, uh, twice on Sundays, yes, sir. Yes. Um, and then there's a, the, he tried to do a seductive song called Shh, you know, yeah. Big Prince. That was kind of corny. Do me like I'm some homework. It was, it was a little out there, but okay, whatever. Am I getting you, know, you hot? Well, no. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the mid 90s, <laughs> you know. It was the mid '90s, you know. I'll, I'll give him a pass for that, you know. Um, he was trying to grow up. Yeah, you know. Um, I think. Was com- was, was com- <laughs> I'm just thinking. I'm thinking of the words now. Like, what, yeah. was, what were they thinking? Sorry. Was, com- was, was confused. <laughs> was confused on the first or second album. I don't remember. Okay, and then there's um, what was the other song um that he did? Don't say goodbye. Yeah, don't say goodbye. Um, Which was the second tune in. Uh, and then that's cheat. Oh, Cheating is good. One? Cheating is good for the soul. It is. It definitely is. Actually, <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, that was yeah. That talk. was um, Yeah, that was what I was thinking of. But there's another one. Um, I'll, ch- I'll why, cheat. Why, why, why? Oh, uh, what's uh, the name of that? Always in my heart. Yes, another yes. powerful tune that he did. And then he was—he even had a verse on the uh, Black Men United song on. Um, you will know. Uh, yeah, you will know, which had Where like did? every single R&B artist, male he R&B artist. He had the, he had the first think of. verse. Right, and and they even get a verse <coughs> on that track with all those with all those artists. We're talking like Boys to Men, Jody C, Keith Sweat, uh, D'Angelo, Brian McKnight, all these other. R. Kelly was there. Pretty much any artist you can think of that was hot in R&B in '94 was on that track, and he got a solo. And. I remember he his, his third album, uh, Backs the World, and he just it just kind of fell off from there. I don't know what happened. He did he, he did another album. I the think Tevin a few years Campbell. Ago. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, he did another another album. I think when I was in high school, like in the late nineties, ninety nine, didn't do anything. It, it kind of just came and went. And I'm like, what happened? Like, what exactly happened to this guy? Yeah, well, I mean, we, I mean, as as far as as far as what happened after that, we know what happened after that. I, I think you remember. Um, you feel me? I know. I've seen pictures of him recently, and I'm just kind of like, eh. he was caught doing things. Okay, okay, I, re- I remember that. Like. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, ended his career. It's, it's 2020 now. That like, part of it, anyway. I'm saying. Well, but this, this, that's not when this happened. Right. This was, this was, by now, what about a decade and a half ago? I think maybe yeah. longer. And you can kind of tell on his on that, that last album that all the lyrics seemed forced. Um, another way was very, very forced. The lyrics were very forced. Um. Yeah. Um. And you can you can kind of tell that he was leaning in that direction. You know, anyway. just, I think, but I think that's the answer. I think it was just more, I don't even think that that was like mm-hmm. the label giving up. Cause by that point, I think he, he might've been on, if I'm, let me see, let me, let me verify. But I, I don't, was it, was it Quest by then? Or was he just on like straight Warner Brothers by then? I think Warner Brothers, I believe. Let me look, I'm, I'm looking. No, it was, Qu- it was still Quest. Was it, he was still was on Quest. Quest. Yeah, I'm wrong. Yeah, he was still on Quest by then. But okay. it's, it just it felt less like them giving up and more like him just kind of giving up. And the songs weren't there anymore. Yeah. I, I don't, did Babyface produce anything on that album? Mm-hmm. See, and I wonder, I wonder, like, what happened? Like, I don't know what happened between his second and fourth album where he just, it just completely just went off the rails. He just completely disappeared. Because um, he, was, he was always more mature than his age, if that makes any sense, like his, his music. A bit, um, yeah. You know, just the people that just the people that he was surrounded by that he worked with, um, and you feel you 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 would think when you have all those people in your corner that you that you'd have a much longer career. And yeah. it just it just it just fizzled out. I don't know. I, I don't I don't get it. And like you said, I guess there was that incident like you were talking about, but but man, it's just like you and would was- think that. It was probably just that he wasn't that guy. That's not really who he was. Um, And maybe he just got sick of trying to be that person. Yeah, I I get that. I mean, you get people that are 10, 11, kind of forced into the limelight, forced into that kind of life, and it it, it can burn you out quick. We've seen, seen, you know, a lot of child actors go south really, really quick. Casey Lattisaw burned out. Yeah, yeah. And just even like child actors, like you saw what happened to the young kids on different strokes and Todd Bridges. Yeah, it was the yeah, first Dana Plato who ended up dead over it. Like, yeah, and then even um uh Goldberg from the Mighty Ducks, he's he yeah. looks like he's you know, he's really going through it right now. And yeah. yeah, there's something about that music industry in Hollywood and being a young kid going into that life, man. It it, it sucks you in and just eats you up, man. And uh yeah, but it, I, I, I'm, it's just kind of unfortunate that he was never able to kind of recover from that. Like, I see so many people from the 90s. Like, I see SWV making a comeback. I see um, Escape put out something new. I, you know, I see Portrait put out something new. And nothing from Tampa. Portrait? Yeah, that's good, exactly. And H, even H-Town, without their lead, you know, they put out stuff. A high five even attempted to put out stuff, but nothing from Tampa. I don't, I don't get it. Um... I say nothing about high five. <laughs> yeah. Because um, there's just nothing there anymore. Um, yeah, there isn't. Yeah. Bless their hearts. Uh, bless their little hearts. But the lead singer passed away too. What's that? The lead singer passed away in the car accident too. No, he passed away because of his fixia, remember? I thought he was in a car wreck. No, nah, not him, bro. Because hmm. he used to huff. Oh, okay. That's what killed him. He huffed. He was huffing. Okay. He, he overdosed on huff. And that was when, 2003 or 2004, somewhere in there? Something like that, yeah. Okay, yeah. And that completely killed them. Like, there really is nothing left. I told you, like, they've, during shows, they were, they were taken to lip syncing Can You Stand the Rain by New Edition with that recording. Mm. That's where it is now. Like, there's just, there's yeah. just nothing left of it, unfortunately. So. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like I said, all these, all these older acts are, you know, making comebacks, they're releasing stuff, you know. But I, I haven't heard anything from Tevin. And that's He's, he did um, so he did uh, he did do one thing on um, on uh, Bossa Nostra, which is uh, a, which is the last Quincy Jones record that we got. 
He yeah. did do, he had a part in the remake of Secret Garden. You have to send me a link of that. It's, 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 it's kind of done in like a, it's weird. It's like a kind of like a Miami drum and bass kind of thing. It's double time. Okay. You know, it's, it's weird. You, you gotta hear it. And Robin Thicke is on it and <laughs> it's, it's very strange. Okay. How was it's that not just, terrible, how... but it's the, the remake of PYT is fun. It's so good. Um, but I'll send it to you so you can hear it. Usher's on it too. And it, yeah, because I think, see, that's another thing. Like, there was, he was just as talented of a singer as Usher, maybe even more so than Usher. And Usher just, you know. He had more range than Usher. Right. You know, he, he obviously he didn't have, obviously he didn't have the entertainment skills and, you know, the dance moves and all that stuff, but. Yeah, few do. Yeah. But I, I fet like his career should have been, should have went a lot longer than it did. Yeah, yeah. I think if he, I think it, maybe, I think maybe you're right. I think maybe it was just a bit too much too fast. Yeah. And then he did something he shouldn't have done and it's just taken him a long time to kind of try to recover from that. But he can still do it. Like every once in a while you'll see, he can you know, still sing? see him put clips up on Twitter because I follow his Twitter account. He'll okay. put up clips of singing. He can, still, he can absolutely still do it. He hasn't lost it at all. Okay, that's he's good little, to know. He's a little scratchier up top, but that's just what happens when you get older. But yeah. he's still got all of his phrasing and the timing is still there. He hasn't lost it at all. And he's not that old. He's what, 40, 41? He can't be, he can't be that much older than I am. Yeah, he's, he's just, he may just be slightly older than you. Just a little okay. bit younger than me even at this point. But yeah. Yeah, that's, the, that's, not, that's not old at all. No, it's really not. It's really he's, not. He's the same age as Usher. Let me look. Uh, he's 43. Okay, yeah, so that's what, the same age as Usher, or right around there. And he's roughly my age, roughly. Okay, yeah. So, and can still do it. Can yeah. absolutely still do it. So, very talented guy, but I agree with you. He, I could, that should have gone a whole lot further. We should still be hearing from him right now, frankly. Yeah. Maybe we will at some point. He's threatened to do an album for years now. Hopefully at some point we'll get it. Okay. I'll certainly listen if it shows up. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So so I was thinking of my second one was a singer who was who has an absolutely incredible voice and still does. Um she put out one album that didn't do anything. Um and then surfaced on Motown Records a couple of years later and hit the roof. All of a sudden, she found herself. Um, we keep bringing up Nara to Michael Walden. She, she, that's, the, that's the producer that she worked with that helped her find herself. And it's Shanice. Um, yeah. She put out her first record that did absolutely nothing. She worked with Brian Lauren on it, who's incredibly talented, by the way. No shade to Brian ever. But it just didn't work. She was too young and it just, it just didn't work. It was for A&M. A&M didn't know what to do with her. They were too busy dealing with Janet at that point. Yeah. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say it every time. You have to. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but at any rate, it just, it just, the, the experiment didn't work. If it wasn't Janet, it was Amy Grant. One of the two of them was just Monopoly. Amy Grant. <laughs> There's a name I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> I know, right? Not since 89. Yeah. Um, 89, 90, something like that. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, so she, that record didn't do anything. And then she got to Motown and finally they got, Gerald Busby got it right and put her in the studio Smile. with Meredith Michael Walden and out comes I Love Your Smile. Do, do, yeah. do, 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 which is the hook. And all of a sudden she has a gigantic pop and R&B hit just like that. I used to have a crush on her too. Oh, I did too. I might yeah. still. <laughs> She's still gorgeous even now. Is she, is she still married to um, Flex? Yeah, she's still married to Flex Alexander to, to this day, yeah. That's good to know. That's, that's good to hear. The marriage I'm, lasts in Hollywood. I'm still, I'm still mad at him about the Michael Jackson movie, though. Very upset. Very, very upset. What a bad idea. What was he thinking? He wasn't. He couldn't have been. Or he was thinking this. I mean, if she would have left him over that, I wouldn't have been mad at her at all. I mean... Wouldn't have been mad at her. That was terrible. Yeah, it was it was every bit that, and his impression was terrible, and the makeup job was bad, and <laughs> that was <laughs> it just I, he for a time he wasn't allowed to get to he wasn't allowed to go to the cookout yeah. as a result of that movie. Like he was disinvited from cookouts all over the world as a result of and even the movie. story the story made no sense. Like I don't know what they were going for. 
I have absolutely no clue. But he paid dearly for that for a while, and he should have. He deserved it. Golly, was he? That Everything was... he got for that and so much more. I mean, like, was he actually, in the, in the filming process, was he thinking to himself, this is going to be a good movie? He couldn't have. There's no way. I can imagine the only thing he would have been thinking was this. But how much could he have really gotten paid for that, though? It couldn't have been that much. Maybe he needed it. I don't know. Oh, man. You got to really need it to do that, because... <sighs> I mean, first of all, you're messing with Michael Jackson, which is just a bad idea in general, the way he's viewed, you know, and, and the way he's viewed by like actual music fans, not by the, not by fly by night press nonsense. I'm not talking about that. Yeah. You know, by the black community, he's, he's viewed as he should be. Right. Go after him that way. Come on, man. Like, <laughs> it was just, I, I, I just, I saw about three quarters of it and I was like, I can't take this anymore. It was just so badly done. Not unlike the DeBarge movie that was done that showed up on that, that horrible thing that with, the bad, with bad wigs and all that showed up on TV one. Like, I haven't seen that one yet. Don't, just don't leave it where it is. Don't go near it. It's not worth okay. it. It's so right. completely terrible. It's like, the, it's like Mc, the McDonald's of movies. It's just awful. What about the Aaliyah movie? That was pretty bad too. It Wendy was, Williams? Yeah. Speaks for itself, really. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you don't get the family involved, it's not going to be good. And no, right. none of them did, and it wasn't good. None of those were any good. It's like Martin Bashir produced that Michael Jackson thing. It just, it just felt like an hour and a half long assassination is what it felt like. Blackballed. Any, has he done anything of any note since, really? <laughs> like, I mean, I uh. guess he can get to the cookout now, but I think he has to bring his own food. Yeah, exactly. I think that's where we are now. <laughs> you got to bring the cornbread, otherwise you can't come in. Oh, man. But that's where we are with it now. But it was just, it was, it was pathetic. So yes, fine. Flex Alexander blew it. Like, he gets the Darwin big time. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but she did nothing. It's not, it ain't her fault. Yeah. But, but she, so she puts out in her child, <laughs> her child blows up and you get, I'd love your smile, of course. Silent which, Prayer, Johnny Gill. Which Gil. we always call do 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 Nobody yeah. called it I Love Your Smile. We call it do 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 And then Silent Prayer. And then Silent Prayer with Johnny Gill. That really good. It was good. And yeah. the cover of Loving You. Okay, yeah, I do remember that. My gosh. Um, that's, that cover is absolutely... I had, so when I got that record, I got the cassette, because it's mm -hmm. what we did then, don't judge me. Um, because it was cheaper, darn it. And I was young and I didn't have any money. Um, but as soon as I read, they, they played that cover on the Urban Contemporary Station out here, PGC. Okay. Like, what is that from? Is that like, did she do it in a movie or something? And I'm like looking, trying to find it. And I found out it was on the CD, mm -hmm. which then means I have no choice. So like literally straight into the car. I, in fact, I think I borrowed my money from my mom. In fact, that's what I did. I borrowed money from my mom's. <laughs> And I drove to Tower and had to get the CD. No, I drove to Record World to get it. That's where oh. I got it from, in the mall. I went into the mall to get it. But I had to have that song. The cover is just dead perfect. It's such mm. a good cover. She nails it. It's in the exact same key. She's not playing. Like, and she can still do it now at her age. Mm. She can still hit that, that, those stupid whistle notes even right now. But just, she's just a ridiculously talented singer. Um, you didn't think I'd come back this hard as silly, um, like completely silly, but, but I get what she was going for. She was trying yeah. to be, she was trying to be a kid and, you know, trying to, trying to be edgy and that's what she did. And the remix is good too. Like Hakeem's remix of I Love Your Smile. I've heard that before. Bro, with the rap in it, which she yeah. kind of nails. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of amazing how she's had a very long career, a, a nice, solid career, but she never really, she, she, she was on the cusp, but she was never able to break through like a Brandy or a Monica. She, or was, a like, she was almost like she was just under the water the whole time. Right, you know, and even, even going on Family Matters didn't really help her, it didn't really elevate her as it should have, because that, that show was very, very popular at the time, you know, but for whatever reason, it, it, never, it just didn't propel her to where she needed to be. And she had all the tools. She was she, very attractive looking, very easy on the eyes. Very, like, very, very easy on the eyes. Yes, very sexy voice, but not overly, you know, not overly sexual. Just, she just, 
just a really good singer. It's a very solid all around performer, but it just never, like you said, she just never blew up the way, you know, like, you know, the people that came, like Brandy came after her, Monica, Aaliyah, and they just kind of, they just kind of took off and she was never able to get to that point for whatever reason. And, yeah. Um, and what was interesting too is that she even had, like, she even had sufficient pop sensibility, like Saving Forever for You. Yeah. Off the, off the uh, Beverly Hills 90210 set. It's a pop song through and through. It's a Diane Warren pop song. Mm-hmm. And she still, she had enough pop sensibility to get that over. So she wasn't like your average female R&B singer. She could do right. both. And, and it's, it, it, it's kind of baffling, to, like, why she, never, why she was never able to break out. Like, was it her record label, not the marketing? The, I mean, I don't, I don't understand. So I will say that on that, I, this is my thought. I will say that, uh, do you, have you ever heard 21 Ways to Grow, the second record yeah. she did? Yeah. So, okay, so that album had turned down the lights, which I think is her best song. Um, it's so, gosh, it's so good. And Babyface's vocals just destroy me. And that bridge is just so perfect. And it's, and mm. the production is chef's kiss. It's so good. Um, but and it, dang, like Bo Watson wrote his face off on that song. <laughs> the guy from Midnight Star, like, yeah. he wrote the music to it. It's just such a good song. And she sings the full out of it. Like, she was totally into it. Like, this is like, if you can have, like, you have, you have Shanice coming to you going, I want to grow up. This is the song that you give them. This is how you do it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, it was romantic. It had intention, but it wasn't lascivious and dirty. Yeah. Like it just, it felt, sen- it was sensual. That's the word. Sounds kind of like it's for you. Like it's for you. Kind of, but this was even better than that. Cause it's- Ooh, oh man. That's my favorite, that's my favorite Shani song right there. It is, that is a good song. I'm not, yeah. it loves for real. I love the way it starts with that British accent. This loves for real. But it's, <laughs> it's just, it's ridiculous. But the song is great. I just think that for me, like, because I'm just so into singers like that and plus mm. she was just ridiculously attractive at that point <laughs> i had a i have had a thing for shanice forever ever but and certainly then like that was the height of it but like i remember the day that that came out i had to have that cd right away <laughs> and like i put that cd in the car and i was like oh my gosh like <laughs> it was just complete and total fire so to me yeah. that song is like her best song easy yeah I- I just remember, like, it's for you. Like I said, it goes back to Family Matters. Um, mm-hmm. she, perf- she performed that on there. And then, for whatever reason, she teased me. And she put out a, she had a, she had a, um, like a, like a one, one and a half minute clip of Eddie Winslow when they're singing. And as a kid, I'm thinking to myself, man, she should be singing that to me. And years later, I, I went back to go try to find that song. Come to find out, a full version was never released. It was never done. So, I, so I had to go on YouTube and I had to download that clip from Family Matters and I had to put that version of my iPod. And that's all I got. That's, I, that's, it's a, and he sings the fool out of it too, FYI. Right. Like, it ain't like right. he can't sing either. He has a great voice. They had good chemistry. Yeah, they really did. They sounded good together. Let's see, that's another missed opportunity. Why did he not have a singing career? Um, him, and, him and Pam from Martin. Pam from Martin to Sheena Arnold? Well, she's different though in that she... She could sing. She could but she did use her voice more than you, maybe more than you realize. She was one of the, she was in the Greek chorus of Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, but I mean, like, I'm talking about like a full-fledged art, like kind of like what Jimmy Fox did or... Tisha Campbell did a, did a record. Yeah, her, yeah, she's okay. She's, she's decent. I, like, I really liked her voice. You didn't like her voice? It is, but when she's singing, when, when, like when they were doing a past the peas on, you know, Martin, mm. she, could, she couldn't hang with Tisha Arnold. She couldn't, she couldn't hang. Well, because Tish- Tashina Arnold was more th- was throatier. She's yeah. like a throatier singer, and Tisha Campbell is all treble. Yeah. But I like it. I mean, I like the I like the tone of her voice. But I do I agree with you. Like she is throatier. Did you see? Her. There's a thing on YouTube that like, resurfaced about three or four years ago. Uh, um, that Tisha Campbell, um, she's singing a Rihanna song. Uh, I think you, and. I don't know what happened, but I guess people were like heckling her or something like that. I don't, I'm not sure exactly what happened. And right as she's about to exit the stage, she like looks around and she like throws up the middle finger and she like walks off the stage. Have you seen that? No, you I seen haven't that? seen it. It was it's kind of funny. Wow. Man, I, haven't seen that. I didn't even know about that. 
And I'm like, I don't know what happened there. I'm not sure if people were heckling her or what, but she like looked around for a second and she like flicked off the crowd and she like walked off the stage. Dang. Very, very weird. It's weird. That is weird. <laughs> wow. I don't deserve to see it. I haven't. Uh... Yeah. Obviously, you're going to find that intended to you. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. I've never seen that. That's that's weird. Yeah. Because it ain't like she doesn't have the chops. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But so, but so 21 Ways to Grow, basically just, it, it's, to me anyway, like it had, it didn't have songs. It just, it, it, the attitude was right. The cover is, the cover was a problem for me at that age. Um, but I'm just being real about it. Um, but the, it had turned down the lights on it and it had When I Say That I Love You. It didn't have, it had like, I like and I wish. It and... did. They were the, they, yeah, yes, they were there. <laughs> it didn't have, it, it, it didn't have, a, I love, I love your smile in there, basically what you're saying. Not a, well, it could have. I think when I say that I love you could have been that. Mm-hmm. And that song's interesting because it was kind of like a reunion with Brian Lauren who did wait, her wait, first wait, record. Wait, which, which song? When I Say That I Love You. Was that even a single? It, I don't think it was, no. Okay. They just, they went, they did turn down the lights and then they went to that Chris Stokes nonsense to try to Chris get more Stokes. singles. Yeah. yeah. The guy that worked with the, with Immature and- Marcus Houston and yeah, B2K. Yeah. It just yeah. It wasn't, they were, ba- those things were barely songs. They were just chart grabs. Yeah. And it just, the record wasn't good enough. It just, it didn't have the songs. And I remember listening to it the whole way through and going, well, this isn't very good, is it? Like there's literally like just two songs and Ace Boom Coon was such a mistake. Like what <laughs> were they? You've heard that, right? <laughs> I got an ace book. Who is my ace book? I can't even with that song. Uh, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, you don't have to do this. You have chops. Leave this to people who can't sing. You don't need this. You know and how it goes, man. Some of these, some, some of these record execs say, hey, you got to sing this song or you got to put this one on the album. Get rid of this one and put this on there. This will get you. It was uh, just you know, completely some... wrong for her. Like, yeah. come on, y'all. Like, this is terrible. It's, just, it's the worst thing on the record. So th- th- I th- to your question, I think that's what happened. It just, she didn't come with the songs the second time. First time she did, second time she just didn't. There was only two. You know what song I did like? It was in her third album, When I Closed My Eyes. I thought that was pretty good. So we have to go there. So, yeah. okay, so a couple of years pass and she's doing background dates with people. Like she sang background and Unbreak My Heart for Tony Braxton. Mm-hmm. You can hear her clearly at the end. Um, she did a... Uh, she did a live at the Redwoods thing with Kenny Loggins, of all people. Uh, she Wait, did a song with him called I Would Do Anything. It's just gorgeous. It's so good. Remember she did a song on the Pocahontas soundtrack? That's between- true. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. And then, and then, as you said, she did It's For You. Mm-hmm. And she did, uh, uh, oh, dang it. The, I can never remember the name of the one from Boomerang. I Don't Want to Love You. That's it. Don't want to yeah. love you. Yeah, yeah that one yeah that's a, that's it yeah mm-hmm. like she it's not like she wasn't active she just wasn't she just didn't make a record yeah um, and as far as i know at that point she wasn't on motown anymore um but but she was just kind of doing these like these one-off things here and there and then finally babyface decides okay enough already because she was doing backgrounds for him mm-hmm. on the uh, on the live thing that he did the mtv live thing along with After Seven and, and a couple of others. And so he's like, fine, let's do this. And so he signs her to La Face and creates the Shanice, the Shanice album. Yeah. Which is another cover that I had a problem with. Because it's, it's just, she just oh. does album covers because she's, no, because she's amazing. Like she's just, she's a gorgeous woman. Yeah. Uh, and photographs really well. Um, but and, and I have that cover too. I think it's. I think I put it on the site. If I didn't, I will. I believe you it's per, you perv. Basically, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm a perv. She's just a beautiful woman. Yeah. Um, but but she. So but when I close my eyes comes out, which I think Shantae Savage wrote, and you remember her, don't you? I will um, survive. Yeah. Yeah. They did the cover mm-hmm. with uh, of I will survive. She wrote the tune. And mm. so, um, along with uh, uh, Warren Campbell, I believe it was. Um, and so, but that song came out and that was never supposed to do what it did. Like that was just supposed to get like the black audience back. Instead, yeah. completely crossed over pop. 
nobody was looking for that. And then after that, like Didn't she came out yesterday. Yeah, that was a, the Beatles uh, remake. No, it wasn't. No, it's not a Beatles cover. It's a Montel that Jordan is. tune. Shep Crawford, Montel Jordan wrote that song. I'll have to go back and listen to that. Yeah. Um, uh, I would only hurt you more if Okay. I'll have to go back and listen to that. I'm pretending that I feel like I did yesterday. And then she did uh, You Need a Man. That was in that album. And I know you need a man. Yeah, that's a good song. That's another Montel Jordan one. She used yeah. to on that record. Uh, you Can Bounce is great. Yeah. It had the song, the record, No Remedy. Bruh. It had, I love that song. That's, that's my favorite song of the record. But it had the baby face thing. Um, you've heard that song, right? Yeah. It's such a great song. And she's totally into it. Like, it's such a, it's such a great vocal. And the production is great, of course, because it's a baby I, face. I want to get your thoughts on this song, Take Care of You. I'd have to hear it again. It's been too long. Oh, man. That, if, if you're having problems with Shanice, you definitely have problems with Freddie. <laughs> Because this, this was probably like 2006, 2007. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that song right there, man. She's basically talking about like, you know, catering to her man and, oh. and I'm going to take care of you. Flex is in the video, actually, which is pretty nice. Is. Oh, yeah. you mean off the, uh, uh, the right, the, 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 in, the indie record she did. Yeah. It actually got some play on um, some of the Quiet Storm stations out here in Texas. I don't know what it did out there in D.C., but it got some play out here in Texas. So. I don't remember hearing it here. Yeah, but man, just the way she sings and how she kind of she kind of whispers, but then she sings and then she goes back to, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. She could, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I feel <laughs> she could. Yeah. She has such a great voice, such a great. Yeah, voice. she does. But she yeah, just very underrated. Yeah, very, very like that. That that Shanice album, if nothing else, should have just broken her, and they mm. set it up to do it. And the songs were there, like even more so than Inner Child. Like the songs were there. And it's like, when I close my eyes comes out and that does the trick and oh great, we're set. And mm. then they put out Yesterday, which isn't a bad choice. And radio goes, nah. Yeah, but I remember when I closed my eyes did, did pretty good. Very well, like it was, yeah. a, but then it's like, Yesterday comes out and it's like, nah. And I'm like, Oh, I'm watching this and I'm going, oh, no, 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 no. Like, there's so much more on this record. Like, this can't be happening again. And it, and it did. Like, after that, there was just no more. And the face stopped promoting it. And it Yeah, I've, I've, I've always wondered how that, how that single process goes. Like, I know there's certain songs that they write that they're going to put out. But I wonder how they go into choosing, like, their second and the third and sometimes their fourth single. Like, how they go about doing that. Because, I mean, there's certain albums you listen to, and it's, it's pretty clear that they didn't really make the record with singles in mind. Kind of like with Joe C's third album, like they just kind of released some stuff. But, yeah. nothing really, but nothing was really meant to be a single, per se. That's, you know? yeah, that, that album was like the poster child for that. Like, we're just putting stuff out. You I, mean, it was, I mean, it was a good album, and, you know, it had some good cuts on there, but it nothing did. was, yeah, nothing was really made for the radio, though. It was just like... It was just like one of those records, quite yeah. unlike the Shanice album, but it was one of those right. records where Devante was just focused on doing Making the stuff music. they wanted to do. Right, right. And I'm giving it, and, and then it's like, they gave it to the record label and they went here, now deal with it. Yeah, exactly. It very much felt like that. And the lack of a promotional strategy felt like that too. Like they yeah. did, They're like, well, I want to deal with it, but I don't know how. I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. So, I mean, they were badly missing Puffy at that point because Puffy would have known. Puffy got yeah. Jodeci right. He knew what to do with them. Yeah. And it's like when he left, there was the direction kind of, there was no direction anymore. Yeah, Puffy's not as talented as people make him out to be, but one thing, he, he can market his ass off, though. He can. He yeah. He can market his ass off. He got yeah. them started. Without Puffy, they don't exist. Right, Uptown, yeah. They just don't, because he was an intern at Uptown and got them, and got them, got them running. And he did that mm -hmm. all by himself. And right. Mary J. Blige, too, has mm -hmm. everything. Her career yeah. is because of Puffy. Yeah. It doesn't exist, other, or Diddy. It does, sorry. Yeah, it, Diddy, it, it, yeah. It doesn't exist, in, it, her career doesn't exist without, without Diddy. Like, yeah, because he, he just knew how to market. He knew, he knew how to, he knew how to, he knew it was going to grab a person's ear. Like the casual audience, he knew it was gonna grab them. He knew he knew that it had to have a look. 
Right. It had to look like something too. Yeah, it's great if you can sing, but we're not in the Christopher Cross era anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't be, no shade, Chris. You can't be ugly and sell records. Right. Not anymore. You could then, but you can't be now. Like, you, right. it, certainly in the 90s, you couldn't. You had to have a look. Yeah. Puffy gave Jodeci a look, gave Mary J a look, turned her into the queen of R&B soul, gave her a hook. And even the hip hop stuff, because she was still kind of rapping at that time too. And that was kind of up his alley. So he kind of just- Oh, completely. He figured out how to, how to kind of mesh those two. And Mary J's one of those, those people, man, like, like you're not going to catch a dude in the hood bumping Whitney Houston or Tony Braxton, but a dude can roll down the street bumping Mary J and nobody's going to, nobody's going to second guess him. Oh, and you heard it. Like you, you, you would hear them rolling down the street over on Halls Hill by me. You'd hear them rolling down yeah. the street playing my life for sure. Yeah, and, and nobody's going to question it. Or you're That's all, I need to get by. I heard lots of that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Method Man. And yes. Yeah. But, th but th that's, that was the genius of Mary J. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you didn't have to, you didn't have to, you, didn't, you could be a dude and bumper music and not be ashamed to do it. Yeah, a real love. You heard that too. Not as yeah. much, but a well, lot really, of you're all I need. And, and real love was actually like a, um, Puffy, I think, I don't know who, I don't know who mixed the beat, but that was actually like Mark a Mark Morales of, from but, uh, the Fat Boys, believe it yeah, or not. Yeah, but, but, Prince but, Marky D did it. But like in the late 80s, Audio, Audio 2, uh, Top Billin, you've heard that song? Do was the name of it again? It's called, it's called Top Billin by Audio 2. Um, I haven't MC, heard that. MC Light's Cousins. It's considered like a hip hop classic, late 80s. That was like the only thing that they did that was worth listening to though. And that's where they sampled the beat for real life, for real love, I think. Get out. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll send it to you. It's a, yeah. It's no, like a cult. It's, it's like, it's like a hip hop cult classic. Like if you were you know, alive. <laughs> you would think I would have heard that. I, I, you, not only you, do I not remember that, I don't remember ever hearing it out here either. You probably have. You probably just don't remember. Probably once you hear, you'll probably remember. Like, okay, I've heard this before. Maybe. Yeah. Weird. Huh. That's interesting. I didn't know where that because it's. I mean, it's just three chords. Yeah. Surely you can come up with that in about five minutes. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But it's. But it. But it works. And actually, it's not true. When you get to the middle eight, there's more than three chords. But. Yeah. But either way, like, you know. It's it's a combination of it's a combination of a bunch of things that made that work. Most of it being Mary J. Yeah, because others have covered that song and they never do it anywhere near as well as she does. Never. Yeah, Mary J. So, yeah, but it's but people at that point had to had to have a look. And maybe that's what it is. I mean, when it comes to when it comes to Shanice, probably not the look, but it's like. It just felt like LaFace just gave up too fast. Cause it was all there. Like all the tunes were there. It's like, well, we needed we need an album with hits. They're there. No remedy's a hit. There's no way it's not a hit. You just missed it. You well, the thing is a hit. Like come that on. was her that was around what, ninety nine, two thousand. So that was kind of around the time. So LaFace was kind of on its way down at that point. You know, it wasn't the babyface wasn't the most in. RMP producer at that point, or he was kind of on his way out. So I mean, it He's kind of makes sense. Becoming a little less by then, that's true. Yeah, so it kind of makes sense that he that that didn't get the promotion that it needed to, because I mean that wasn't really the sound that people were looking for in '99. It was more about Dark Child and Timbaland and you know people people like that. But it's not like you can bounce didn't sound like that. I mean, it wasn't Dark Child didn't do it, but yeah. it had kind of it had the same kind of a sound, and it was full of attitude and. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's like come on like this is such a hit why are we missing this maybe it was the fact that they followed with a ballad maybe yesterday was just too soft yeah no, yeah and that's not something you should be releasing in 99 as a single i don't think it's such a great the problem is it's such a great song though like, yeah I, I agree with you i mean it, it it doesn't like the protagonist doesn't come out of it looking very good she looks like trash <laughs> It's a really well written song because it's like, well, I used to love you, but I don't feel like I did yesterday. Like, right? Go oh, away! Like, <laughs> ain't nobody worried about you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's but, uh, it is, but it's such a good song. The chords are very pretty, and she sings it well. No, it's not about somebody else. It's about me, yeah. which, as a guy, you do not want to hear. Right. Because then it's. <laughs> It's it's a bit it's a little trash, but uh, but uh, the sentiment is trash. But the song is great. Maybe and maybe it was the sentiment. Maybe that was the problem. Right. That could have been it. I don't know. But for whatever reason, to your to your point earlier, it's like she went like this. And 
It's like, dang it, not quite. Like, yeah. So and many she, misses in that career. You know? And she said a long, she had a long career, like you said, started in what eighty seven, and but yeah, just I don't know, like you just couldn't couldn't break through for whatever reason. Yeah, never quite connected. So, and the, and that uh, the indie record she did is very good. It's worth hearing. Yeah, because of course it's Chinese. I'm gonna buy it. So. And I'm gonna send I'm gonna send you the song with her Flex, man. You're gonna be mesmerized. You're gonna be like, man, like, I wish you could sing that to me right now. Oh, I've heard the one with yeah, the one with Eddie. I've heard it. Not that one. The one with uh, um, Flex, the one that came out in 2006. Um, she's t- take care of you. I'm gonna send that over to you. That was that's on that album. I just need to take the album out. Okay. <clears throat> I have it on a CD. All right. I just need to take that thing out and listen to it, and I will for sure. 